Hi, I'm Sarah from henamyoga.com and today I'm going to take you through a lovely half an hour relaxing pregnancy yoga flow. So this is going to be suitable no matter what stage you are in your pregnancy. I'll give you some adaptations if you're a little further along. Uh, if you're in the first 12 weeks, it's always advisable to exercise caution. So take care and avoid any twists or anything which you feel could impact the growth of your baby. We'll start seated cross-legged and you don't have to have had any yoga experience to join in. When you're ready, settle your seat, so rock from side to side and evenly distribute your weight on your seat bones. Lift your shoulders up to your ears, squeeze them high, pull them back and down. We'll start to incorporate our breath with these shoulder rolls. So you inhale to lift the shoulders up and high and you exhale to roll them back and down. Good, big rolls through the shoulders, releasing the tension. From here, we'll close our eyes. Let the hands settle on your knees or thighs and breathe in to try and grow nice and tall through the crown of your head. As you breathe out, you let your shoulders drop away from your ears. Breathe in, chin out of chest. Breathe out, feel grounded, seat bones on the earth. Inhale for three. Exhale. Two more breaths like this, through your nose if you can. Breathing in and breathing out. Inhale deeply and exhale start to gently tilt your head to the right drop your chin to your chest and small circles with your head you don't want to make these circles too large because your head weighs about 10 kilograms so if you take it too far in any direction you're putting a lot of strain on your neck muscles and then when you're ready reverse the direction of your neck rolls and come to sit in a neutral position. Inhale, sweep your arms up high above your head. Exhale, palms touch as you drop them down through the center. Inhale, reaching up around you and above you. And exhale, down towards your heart. Inhale, lift up high. Exhale to lower. From here, we take our fingertips onto our shoulders. Start to circle the right elbow up back and down in space. So making nice wide circles, letting your eyes follow the elbow around, opening up through this side of the body. Changing sides, sweeping the left elbow up, around and down, and seeing if this side feels any tighter or if it feels a little bit more spacious. Remembering that no two people are alike and no two sides of everyone's bodies are alike. We're different on the left and the right. We're asymmetrical beings. And then take both elbows forward, up, out to the sides, back and down. Three big, large circles like this. Lovely. Release the hands to the ground. Slide the right hand onto the earth. Spread the fingers wide. Bend the elbow. Reach the opposite arm up and over. Imagine you're drawing a giant C shape with your arms. As you breathe in, roll your chest towards the ceiling or sun above you if you're outside. And as you exhale, hold. Inhale two, breath into the side body. Exhale. Inhale, reaching a little further over. And exhale, both hands come up to meet above your head. Interlace your fingers. Find the back of your head with your open palms and let your skull fall back into your head with your elbows nice and wide. As you breathe in, your heart lifts up towards the sky or ceiling. And as you exhale, you hold. Inhale for two, letting the chest rise, the breathing expand, exhale. Inhale for three, taking the weight of your head in your hands. As you breathe out, draw the elbows together and slowly curl down touching elbows down towards the ground perhaps if that feels good. See if you can round the back of your neck to get a stretch through your cervical vertebrae. As you inhale come back up, exhale to release hands to the ground, 
keeping your fingertips on the ground, lift your legs and circle your ankles all around so you get the blood flowing back into your feet. Change the cross of your legs, shooting your left hand onto the ground, bending the elbow, softening the shoulder away from the ear, sweeping the other arm up and over, reaching with the fingers. Inhale, look to your top elbow. Exhale, reach over, keeping your seat bones on the ground. Inhale, two, looking up. Exhale, hold. Inhale, three, breathing into the side ribs. Exhale, stretching over. Inhale, come to sit straight. Lift your arms up above your head and breathing out, take them through the center. From here, we're going to take the right hand to the ground again. Left arm reaches overhead, but this time the chest rotates to face down towards your knee and you reach overhead. As you inhale, you wave and open up. And as you exhale, you close down towards the ground. So just keep the movement flowing like this. We're trying to get into the lower left side of our back. So you should feel a good stretch through there. Make the movement feel good in your body. And from here, let your hand come to your knee, taking it into an open twist. Hello, doggy. Your right hand comes behind you. Breathe in, lift up tall through the crown of your head and breathe out to gently rotate through the rib cage. Inhale, think length. Exhale, think rotation of your body around your spine. Inhale, three, chin out of chest. Exhale, twist and relax your shoulders. Good job. And then from here, you sweep the opposite arm up and over. So one arm stays crossed in front of you. And then you lift back up to neutral and you slip that arm under the other one. And you reach the left arm up and over for a stretch here. Good job. Release the hands back to your side, sit up straight. And then the right side. So we reach the right arm all the way up and over, chest comes to face the ground. Inhale, wave up towards the sky or ceiling and exhale, rotate down to the mat. Keep going like this, taking the movement at your own pace, trying to cultivate a deep breath in and out through your nose. So that's half of yoga is coordinating your breathing to your movement. And next time your hand comes towards your knee, let it hold the knee. Let your left hand come behind you up on the fingertips. Breathe in, reach through the crown of your head. And as you breathe out, draw your left shoulder back in space. Inhale for two. Exhale to twist. Inhale three. Beautiful view of the Southwold flowers, poppy farm behind us. Breathe out, twist. From here, keep your hand on your knee and reach the arm that's behind you all the way up and over for a big stretch. Come back up to sit and slide that arm underneath your crossed arm and release your right arm up and overhead. Good job. Coming back to neutral, take the hands to the knees, roll the shoulders up, back and down three times. Lovely and find your way onto your hands and your knees. From here, we start to roll around the base of the palms. So looking at your hands, spreading the fingers nice and wide, maybe you'll get some good cracks out of your hands as you roll them around on the ground. Because we're going to be putting a little weight into our hands, so it's always a good idea to get a, the joints lubricated and supple. And then place your hands down on the mat, underneath your shoulders, fingers spread nice and wide apart, arms straight. Start to circle the hips in whichever direction works for you. Small circles to start with, and then you can begin to spiral them out like a seashell. Taking the hips out to the side, back, down and around. Seat comes towards heels, out to the side, forward, and then back, lovely. 
And next time your seat comes towards your heels, change the direction of your large circles. Start to spiral the circles in, so you're making them smaller. And coming back to a neutral position. Walk your hands further forward from your shoulders, drop your hips forward and pull them back. So you're sending the pelvis forward and backwards in space. If your baby bump is quite big, if you're quite far ahead in your pregnancy, maybe third trimester, you can take the knees a little wider. Good job. One more. And then come to neutral. Hug your baby in towards your spine. So really use the tummy muscles to pull the baby up and in. And start to extend your right leg behind you, toes to the ground. Rock forward and backward off the toes. So you can feel, oh, I got a good click out of my ankle. Maybe you do too. You can feel that's working through the leg, through the ankle joint. And from here, if you don't have any pelvic girdle pain, if you do have pelvic girdle pain, it's the shooting pain down the inside and sometimes the outside of the thighs caused by the ligaments becoming more lax in pregnancy due to hormones. If that feels okay, you can lift your right leg up behind you and point your toes. Maybe you even start to extend your left arm out in front of you so you're balancing in superwoman pose. Very useful for labor. As you exhale, drop the fingers and toes to the ground. As you inhale, lift them. Exhale to lower. Inhale, lift, squeeze the glute. Exhale, lower, and inhale, lift. Good job, bring the hand and knee back onto the ground. As you inhale, start to peel the left elbow up towards the sky before you release the fingers. So straight arms, trying to open up through that top shoulder. Draw the arm forward and we're going to make three big circles, sweeping forward, up and down like the hand on a clock face. And next time your fingers come up high, see if you can find the back of your skull and gently keeping the fingers on the back of the skull, lift the elbow up nice and high, trying to get more space into the side body. We have so many constrictions when there's a baby and placenta inside us, there's less room for our internal organs, our lungs. So we're trying to open up this breathing space. And as you breathe out, slowly drop the elbow to the ground. As you inhale, you lift the elbow up high. As you exhale, touch the ground. Inhale, sweep up and high. Exhale, lower down to the earth. Elbow stays on the ground, bring the forearm down, fingers parallel from, with the front edge of your mat, and take your right arm out in front of you. So we're going to come up on the right fingertips, forehead comes onto the forearm, you can have a little rest here. Hips stay nice and high, and you're keeping that right arm lifted and stretching forward. Try to pull your right hip slightly back so you get lovely length through the right side of your body. Breathe into the back of the heart and breathe out, hold. Inhale, two. Exhale, chest dropping to the ground. Inhale, three, hips staying high. And exhale. Inhale to slowly come back up onto your hands. Give your tail a little wag like a dog just to bring your spine back into neutral. Check the fingers are spread nice and wide and you want the wrist directly underneath the shoulders so you're stacking your bones and you have this strength. And then press into the palms to lift your body slightly away from the mat and hug the baby in towards you using your tummy muscles. Extend your left leg behind you, toes on the ground and start to rock forward and backwards. Especially in pregnancy, we tend to get fluid accumulation in our wrists and our feet more often. It's hard for the extra volume of blood in the body to reach these areas. So it's good to get movement, getting the lymph and the blood going, getting your extremities fired up. And you always feel better after moving, even if you have morning sickness. And from here, 
We'll start to lift the left leg unless you have the pelvic girdle pain, in which case keep the toes on the floor. Maybe you extend the right arm forward, super strong here. See if you can lift a little higher away from your mat on your inhale. And as you breathe out, drop your limbs towards the ground. Inhale to rise away from the earth. Exhale to lower. Inhale, reach forward with fingers and back with toes. And exhale, lower. Draw the hand and knee in towards each other and start to peel the right elbow up towards the sky. Release the fingers all the way towards the light above you. Good, and then draw the hand forwards. So we're sweeping forward in that 360 degree clock face motion. Imagine your arm is a straight minute hand. You're sweeping the mat on the way down. Getting mobility and flexibility into your shoulder joint. Next time your fingers come high, find the back of your head, elbow lifting up high, open up through the side body. Breathe in, lift the elbow higher. And as you breathe out, drop the elbow to the ground. Inhale to rise up. Exhale to lower. Inhale, open up and peel up to the sky and exhale, draw back down to the earth. Drop the right forearm to the ground, fingers coming off to the side of your mat. Left arm is coming out in front of you. Reach away from you, walk the spider-like fingertips all the way forward and drop your forehead to your forearm. So you can get a nice rest here, hips staying high. If you want to increase the intensity of the stretch, you draw your left hip away from your left armpit to find length through that side of the body. Breathe into the back of the heart space and breathe out to hold. Inhale two. Exhale. Inhale three. Breathe out. Inhale, draw the hand back. Tuck the toes. Start to walk your hands in towards your thighs and we're going to rest our weight into our heels. If your little toe gets stuck, untuck that too. And if you can't bear any weight down into your toes, you can always lift up. But the idea is that we're putting a bit of weight in and we're flexing our toes the other way. So usually we're walking in shoes and this is flipping them up the other way. So it's really good as well for your circulation. Breathe and sweep the arms up and high and interlace the fingers, flip the palms towards the sky or ceiling, take a little twist over to your right, take a little twist to your left, and again left and right, not an easy twist to take but do the best you can, and release the arms all the way behind you, interlacing the fingers together, forming a fist. See if you can roll your shoulder blades in towards each other, lift the fist and chin, opening up through the throat and the chest. Breathe in. As you breathe out, option to come into rabbit pose. So you dive forward, bringing the crown of your head to the ground, lifting your hips up high, tucking your chin in, keeping the weight in your knees rather than your head. And you're just trying to stretch through the back of the spine here. On your inhale, you slowly come all the way up release the shoulders and start to, I'm just going to turn forward so you can see, we're going, you can untuck the toes now, they've probably had enough, and we're going to tuck the thumbs in and wrap the fingers around the thumbs and then circle the wrists all the way up above your head, looking up and start to circle them down as you look to your lap. Change the directions of your circles, take your wrists up above your head again and draw your chin down towards your lap. Lovely, we'll take a twist here. So inhale, sweep your hands up high. As you exhale, bring your left hand to the outside of your right leg and the other hand finds your toes. So you're tickling your toes and twisting over to the right. Inhale, lift your chin out of your chest. And as you exhale, see if you can draw your back shoulder further back. Breathing in deeply and breathing out, twisting to make more space through your torso and keeping the baby facing forward. 
and from here we come back to neutral. If it's not comfortable to sit kneeling, you're always welcome to use a cushion or blanket or come to cross-legged position. We're going to interlace the hands around the base of the baby, so just carry the weight of your baby for a second. This feels especially good when you're further on in pregnancies. I've had two pregnancies before, so I know what it's like when you're close to the end and your belly is so heavy. And from here, we're going to start taking a motion in whichever direction feels more instinctive for you round your belly, just massaging the external skin, sending that loving vibe down into your baby. So imagining your baby growing inside you, whether you're 10 weeks or 30 weeks, the baby is there developing and you've nurtured it. Your clever body has provided all the nutrients, the space, the right environment for your baby to thrive and prosper. You did this, so feel proud of your achievements so far. There's a lot of anxiety in pregnancy, even in my third pregnancy, I'm still really anxious. But let's try to just in this class, feel blessed and feel proud that we've been able to create life. Something half the population can't do. <laughs> And then from here, we're going to take a twist in the other direction. Inhale, sweep the arms up high, palms meet above your head. Exhale, right hand comes down. Find the outside of your leg and tickle your toes with the other hand. Breathe in, straighten the spine and breathe out. Draw your back shoulder behind you. Inhale to, exhale to twist. Inhale three. Exhale, maybe rotate a little deeper if it feels good. Lovely. And then coming back to the center, taking your left hand to your heart, your right hand onto your baby, hugging your baby in towards you with your hand and feeling in for the beat of your heart underneath your ever-expanding breasts. Breathe in for one. Breathe out. Calm your nervous system. Inhale, two. Exhale, inhale three. After your last breath out, taking child's pose. So let the knees come really nice and wide apart to make space for your expanding tummy. Walk your hands out in front of you. Maybe take a little sway from side to side to get juicy in the hip flexors and allow yourself to fold all the way down. Might be a better idea to have the mat rather than some soil underneath you. So make sure you've got something comfortable and preferably something that smells good underneath your face. So I've been there, I've done yoga at home on my carpet, which isn't always the best. So if it's too much, you can always place palm on top of palm and put your forehead onto your hands. If you can, you're softening through the shoulders. You're allowing the gentle pressure through the center of the forehead to stimulate the vagus nerve, which is the longest nerve in the body, and it runs down into your digestive system, and it is concerned with the regulation of lots of your bodily functions. So by calming this nerve, applying a bit of gentle pressure, it helps to slow down your system, put you into more of a rest and digest kind of nervous response rather than a fight or flight, which is what we spend a lot of our busy lives in. So it's always a good chance to calm down and slow down in child's pose. Let your seat sink further towards your heels on your exhale and let your armpits soften. Next breath in, you can walk the hands in, bring the knees in, start to take the hands behind you, fingers face forward, so fingers maybe touch your toes. And from here, you can push into the palms, lift the shoulders and heart, either stay here or maybe it feels good to lift the hips up off the heels as well. Squeeze your glutes and use the strength in your quadriceps, your thighs to lift higher. Breathe in for two and hold, breathe out. Breathe in three, maybe lift a little higher and breathe out, slowly release. Take your hands forward. Tuck the toes, chance to come into a downward dog. 
So they do advise if you're more than 37 weeks pregnant and your baby is head down in the correct position, you can come into a squat instead to help prepare your baby's descent. Or if you are less than 37 weeks and it feels good for you, you can come into a downward dog. So putting your weight into your hands and feet and pedaling out your legs. So bending one knee and then the other taking your feet wider apart than your hips in your pregnancy downward dog and gently shifting your body weight around while you're upside down so you're helping your circulatory system and delivering freshly oxygenated blood to your brain give your head and neck a gentle shake out to relieve all the tension in the trapezius muscle from the ear to the tops of the shoulders And then from here, take baby steps forward, nice and wide, till you come towards the front of your mat. Feet are super wide, little rock backwards and forwards on the feet with the hands on the floor so the knees are deeply bent. Before you take hold of your elbows and you find ragdoll position. It's called ragdoll because you need to be all floppy here. So let go of all the tension in your spine, allow it to traction. Let gravity do its work so you can feel the elbows are pulling down towards the earth. You're making sure the back of your neck is nice and long so you're looking between your legs at the view behind you, whether you're outside or inside. And you can stay here or maybe you take a gentle sway from side to side, lengthening through the left side of the body and then the right side. Change the grip of the hands on the elbows just to swap it around and balance out the left and right hemispheres of your brain. Maybe give your head and neck a gentle shake all around. You might even want to try fluttering your lips like a horse. And if you can do that, it just means there's no tension in your jaw or the base of your tongue where we often store tension. Good job. From here, you take your hands to the ground and we're all going to come into the squat position. So taking your heels out nice and wide, turning your toes out and gently coming down to sit. Taking your hands in prayer in front of your heart and reaching up tall with your spine. So if this is too uncomfortable, you can always place some books or a blanket underneath your bum and then it's easier to sit here because you've got deep flexion going on in your knees and your hips. Try to straighten the spine. Try to draw the shoulders back in line with the hips. Good job. From here, we're going to come to sit, either using your hands or if you're close to the ground, you could just release your bum down to the earth and take the legs out in front of us. Coming down to your elbows, reclining down. Our last challenging pose. So you squeeze the legs together, you point the toes, and when you're ready, you're going to lift up through the heart. So you try and get that real arc through the back of your spine, rolling your shoulder blades in towards each other, lifting your chin. Keep rolling, internally rotating the legs in towards the invisible center line. Pointing the toes, squeezing the legs. And then release, lovely, tuck the chin back in. See if you can flex the right foot and point it as you flex the left foot. So your feet are swapping, flexing and pointing. And again, this just gets the circulation back into them. And then take both feet to one side and both feet to the other side. So your feet are like windscreen wipers and they're just going from left to right. You can feel the legs rotating within the pelvic sockets. And from here, we're going to come to lie all the way down on the back that you've been waiting for. Take a big, long stretch before we come to lie on the left-hand side, depending how pregnant you are. So if you're 20 weeks or more, you might wish to lie on your left or you may wish to lie on your back. It's up to you personally. If it becomes too uncomfortable very quickly, you can always turn on to your side. So taking your choice of position, either lying on your back like a starfish with your palms facing up or bending the knees and allowing your body to fall in fetal position onto the left hand side as though you're sleeping. Maybe having a hand underneath your head like a cushion. 
Allow your body to start to drop into the earth. Try and feel that connection to your baby and imagining how you're delivering the baby these oxygen rich nutrients from your yoga practice, from moving the oxygen and the air around inside your body and creating more access to oxygen rich blood for your baby knowing that you're doing both of you a favor by moving in a gentle and mindful way. Allow the breath to soften, allow the jaw to relax, and start to let your mind wander just for a very short amount of time before we sit back up together and say namaste. So just let yourself go for a little bit of silence. Start to take deeper breaths. And if you wish, if you're really comfortable, you can stay here. Or you can start to press your right hand into the ground from your left hand side and come up to sit, keeping the eyes closed or semi-closed, finding yourself in cross-legged position if that's comfortable for you or sitting however works best. Hands come in prayer position, Anjali Mudra in front of your heart. And as you inhale, you lift your thumbs to your third eye. Loka Samastar Sukhini Bhavantu. May all beings be happy and free. Release your hands back down to your heart and then cup your palms around your baby, hugging your baby in close to you. Take a breath in to send it love. And exhale light. Inhale love. Exhale, light. Last time, inhale, love for your baby. And exhale, the light you'll find together. From here, take your arms out in front of you and together we bow down and say namaste. Thank you for watching and following along. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope it made you feel great and I hope your pregnancy continues to go well. You can always contact me on Instagram, Sarah Rouse Yoga, or on my website, henemyoga.com. I'd love to hear from you, especially if anyone's due a baby in October locally, because this is at Southwold Flowers and I live not far away. So if you're in Southwold and practicing along too, good luck to you and congratulations wherever you are in your pregnancy.